This afternoon, what I want to talk to you about is something called near-peer role modeling. And I'm going to describe what it is, why it's important, <coughs> tell you how it kind of came about, and show you some video excerpts of students talking about near-peer role models and the ways that we've used the concept to increase motivation. And I, most of my examples are about English learners in Japan and Taiwan, as that's where I've been working, but it can be applied to anyone, anywhere, learning practically anything, okay? It's a very general concept. Um, near-peer role modeling, a near-peer, a peer is somebody the same age, approximately, okay? Near can mean many different things. It can mean age, ethnicity, gender, interest, near in proximity and in frequency, okay? It's contrasted to a distant role model or in language learning sometimes to the native speaker, okay? And a concrete example that I can give you is Michael Jordan. All of you know who Michael Jordan is? He's a famous basketball player. When my Japanese students and Taiwanese students play basketball, out in the playground. They talk about Michael Jordan and they like him, um, but he's a very distant role model. He's far away in space, miles, in age, ethnicity, okay, and ability as well, okay. When they play on the playground with peers, there's lots of wonderful things going on and they see these people every day and they can model them more easily, okay, and those are near peers. And the main idea that I want to get across today is that students in a language class are usually modeling each other more than they are native speakers or even teachers, okay? And sometimes they're doing wonderful things, and if the teacher can highlight those wonderful things that the students are doing and show that to the rest of the students, then it can increase their motivation and their efficiency in learning, okay? So that's near-peer role modeling in a nutshell. Why is it important? Um, it's very important because peers, according to a lot of research, have much more influence on us than distant role models or the native speaker or other people. Judith Rich Harris, uh, published a book in 1998 called The Nurture Assumption. And the subtitle was something like Why Parents Don't Have the Influence They Think They Have. And basically all the research said that once children start going to school at the age of four or five, parents stop having the number one influence on their children. It's their peer group. Okay, It's the other children that they're with. And the most we can do is actually put them into a good school. Okay, into a good environment. So what is it that they're modeling and they're learning and copying? Um, Bandura, who is a mainstream psychologist, calls this, this social learning theory, that we basically copy whatever is in the environment, whether it's violence, drugs, or whatever, those predominant influences in our environment, we copy them and those behaviors. So as teachers, it's, it seems like it's really important for us to realize that if our students are imitating each other, being inspired by each other to learn or not to learn, we need to figure out how to use this in some ways to offer them more alternatives for learning. Okay, And that's what I'm going to be talking about doing today.